All right, in the last video, I used the, the free online browser-based version of Illustrator, which is called Vector. And it's pretty different than Illustrator, but it does allow me to do custom uh, letter forms by arranging them and setting them individually and adding different attributes to them. So what I'm working on is saving them individually now. I have anxiety saved. Mark that. And now I want to isolate plague. And having done both of them, open it up in a web browser, I liked the, uh, the slight waviness of this setting. So I'm now customizing plague again just by moving them around individually, just with my arrow keys, adjusting their size until the spacing between them feels right. So hand adjusting. That's why it's called type setting, because we're putting the type and setting it in its place. Now that this only has those plague letter forms as part of it, I'm going to export this. So I'm downloading lots of SVGs. The good thing is vectors take up very little memory, and I'm making sure they're all solid black. But then in order to name them differently, instead of just all untitled, I have to bring them into my folder and then give them a name. So from my downloads, bring it in. And sometimes I'll just put a little symbol so they show up alphabetically. So I have anxiety, I have my blocking sketch, and now I have plague. Not that, not right now. So here I have just plague, this new setting. Then I'll put a little symbol in front of it. Because with all these elements we're doing for poster design, there's lots of little things that are going to get mixed together to give us our fi final poster. So I have some modified type here, but I haven't added any vector shapes to it yet. So now what I'm going to try to do is bring in the vector file. So to do that, we haven't used this since we did the logo project, but I'm going to upload an, an image. And I'm going to upload first my sketch. So to find that, here it is. And size doesn't matter much because these are vectors, right? So I can keep it nice and big like this. Why not? Well, I guess I'll shrink it into the square, which is called the artboard, just because that's what will show on a if I open it in a web browser. Okay, then I'm going to put that image. This is just a guiding sketch. I'm going to put it behind everything. See that in my layers. And then I'm going to duplicate that. And I'm going to rotate it. 180 degrees. So I have two of these, right? What happened to my A? <laughs> okay, my A is still there. Good. Move this down below. Okay. Doing the mirror image might have been a little bit ambitious, but it's fun. 
And I'm going to take the opacity of these images down a little bit, just as a way of onion skinning. Come on. There. And it will help me line them up. And that's where the border helps as well. I feel like I need to lock everything. Okay. We fit it on the screen. Let's turn this one off. And now I can take, take my images and lock them. So I can just select all of Plague and then move it and size it kind of together like so. You see how everything will move together even though they're separate letter forms. So I want it to fit, you know, before the diamond. But what's great is they're all vectors and they're all individual. So here the border is no longer working in the same way. You know, it's getting too thick at that smaller scale. And I can just arrange each one into where I think it would look best. And I can set them now onto my sketch. And because they're still type, I can even, so I change that A to a lowercase a to kind of fit with the space. Now I could have done this from the very beginning, but I wanted to show you how type can just be satisfying on its own as well. And so there's two challenges here. It's getting the type to look interesting. And then there's getting it to all work with your image. These are the design challenges of digital artists. We can tilt. Not my favorite thing to do, but it might be necessary here. And this gives a little bit more nuance to each letter form. So first and foremost, I want these things to be readable. So plague, there it is. I'll give myself some breathing room since I don't need the D. So 
the point of that handkerchief is tough, so I might change this back to a capital A. And it, at any time, I can also just copy and paste or just change the... Uh, so maybe I want an A now. That has a uh, a sharp top, you know, to work within the the image, but still fits with the other typefaces. So a lot of care and time goes into type design and title flag design. And this will help you be sensitive to all of those options. Yeah, I'm gonna to try to use this one. Nudge with my arrow keys. And because I've locked my sketch, I can always select just everything by just drawing a box around it and then move it all together as well. So it's a lot like compositing. So I can take these two now and I can grow them together and nudge them. Yeah, and that's working better. And maybe I'll shrink the E a little bit. If things are kind of jumping in steps, you just want to zoom in a little. And then, of course, you can always augment them using the, the direct keys rather than just stretching. So I have like a fuzzy A, it's kind of interesting. Yeah. All right. So now, huh, again, it's all about downloading, having your different options. And what I really need to do is delete both of the images and now save this as my my new plague that I'm going to use. So now in assignment eight, I have two things to download. I will call this final plague. There it is. And it just looks so small there, even though it's a vector, just because of the, the size it is on the artboard. That'll make more sense when I show you it in Illustrator, but everything's clean, it is a vector. So when I bring that into Photo P for the poster, it's going to work well. And then I also have this one saved, which is it with the sketch. And that's important because I just deleted it from, from Defont, right? So if I needed to, I could open it from there. But for now, I'll just do Command Z and get my sketch back. Now I can again lock my sketch 